it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. But hmm, but delicious. Well, hello and welcome to the Tuesday edition of What Are You Doing, Ed? You can't just start. We, we've only just begun, and you're dropping things all over the place. Anyway, it's Glen ZB TV, the show that puts Glen ZB and Ed's noises into your TV. Uh, we'll start this morning with some Muppet abuse, uh, because we've got Kevin Clash, who is the voice of Elmo. He has, uh, he's denying accusations that he had sex with a 16 year old boy. And in spite of denying those allegations, uh, the puppet master, as he's being called in these stories, the puppet master Clash uh, has, has been granted a leave of absence. In spite of denying the allegations of him, this, this happened about seven years ago. It's not, it's not sort of new news, but the fa it's come out. That's, that's, that's the new news. I don't know why anybody is surprised about this, because I've got photographic evidence of his sordid history of abuse. Uh, look at that. It's Elmo. He's just invited Elmo to sit on his lap. Little Elmo. And Elmo's looking a little bit perturbed there. And then I don't know what he is doing to Elmo in this picture here, but Elmo certainly does not look happy about it. I think that's what you call a cry for help right there. And then again, I mean, it's pretty clear what he's doing to Elmo there. He's got his arm right up there, and I don't know what the, what the sticks are about. This sadistic bastard. Uh, when will he be brought to... And I mean, and, I mean look, he's in agony. Elmo, poor old Elmo, is... He's basically... This is like... It's like the next installment of the Saw movies, what this guy is doing here. And look at this. He's sort of got this gleeful look of... Ha 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 ha, you're my puppet. Kind of look going on there. So I think... I think it's good that they finally outed this guy for what he is, a sadistic uh, Muppet fiddler. All right, uh, next we've got some inter-office emails, all nicely done lads. Uh, we've got, uh, good morning, I'd like to welcome Jenny Craig to TRN. Jenny starts in the adult team today, so please make her feel welcome. So I guess she's starting with the adult team, and uh, once they're in shape, uh, she might move to the, to the youth the youth music team, because they, they're big on the junk food down there, so they probably could do with some nutritional advice. Uh, good luck coming up to ZB. Um, yeah, Jenny Craig is now here at TRN, just just sorting us, sorting out. Good job. I'm, I'm, I'm welcome, welcome Jenny Craig. Um, we also, in the inter-office emails, uh, and this is quite a serious one, yesterday, Westport News Talk ZB is not carrying program! The transmitter at Cape Falwind is okay. Uh, the SCA system is not decoding. Uh, yeah, there, there was a, there, there start, oh, I started losing interest in this email. Uh, the Cordia personnel have been, they, they've been to Cape Falwind. Other investigations are continuing. So anyway, it was a dire situation. People in Westport weren't getting used to what they'd be. Uh, so of course I leapt uh, to the internet to find out more about the um, the Cape Falwind transmitter. Cape Falwind and, and Tauranga Bay, they're on the coastline. They're about 16 kilometres southwest of Westport. I didn't know there was anything further west than Westport. I mean, it, it's the port that's west, right? But this is even further, it's even further west than the wholesome cement works, apparently. Uh, you've got to go past them to get to Cape Falwind. The walk is one way, I bet it is. And you'll need to arrange transport at the track end or return back the way you came. So those, those poor innocent techs who had to go out and check the transmitter at, at Cape Falwind, they probably never made it back. Although maybe they did because then there was an email slightly after that saying, don't worry, the Westport News Talk ZB transmission is now restored. So perhaps not quite as arduous getting to the transmitter at Cape Falwind as, as I suspected. Right, we've got, oh, this is exciting, the perils of free food, part two. So once again, I'm, I'm walking through the office yesterday and um, I see a box containing these, and a box containing these, and I thought, ha 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 ha, I'm not falling for that one, because we all know what happened last time I saw some delicious looking um, honey uh, roasted macadamia nuts, right Alan? I'm gonna mm, dig them for those. Not bad. Yes, that's right, and then I threw up the next day, which was nothing to do with the, my experimental cocktails from the night before. So I immediately uh, took these home and fed them to my dog. And when I say these, I mean two boxes worth, obviously. 
And yeah, you know, people say that you shouldn't feed chocolate to your dog because it will kill the dog. Which is, of course, ridiculous. Because it's not the chocolate that kills your dog, it's the theobromine in the chocolate that kills your dog. And it turns out that the amount of theobromine in one of these is nowhere near enough to kill your dog. However, as I discovered, the amount of theobromine in a couple of these is definitely enough to kill your dog. So yeah, killed my dog. It's been a hard week for me really on the free, the free food front. Me throwing up one day, dead dog the next. Never mind. Uh, we're keeping up uh, with Caleb. Uh, you remember I, I was talking about him yesterday. This is the guy who supposedly woke up last week and couldn't move his legs and so ended up in Starship Hospital in a desperate attempt to try and get some attention. Well, I went and saw him yesterday, and this is, this is him yesterday. Quite obviously, he was faking because he's, there he is getting around the place on crutches. Don't be alarmed, he's still got a whole leg, he's just bending it back. back. This is the kind of behaviour that I've come to expect from young Caleb. He's just, he's, he makes things look worse than they really are. Uh, because, I mean, I got in there, and his mum said, show, show Glenn ZB how high you can lift your leg now. And he could lift it like that high, off the bed. So, yeah. Uh, and I, I, either that, or it was just me getting there that made him feel heaps better. Could, it, was either, it was either that, it was Glenn ZB turning up, that was, caused dramatic improvement in his condition. Or it could have been uh, the hours of physiotherapy, and uh, the litres and litres of uh, antibiotics that they've been pumping into him through an intravenous drip. Could have been those things, or it could have just been Glenn ZB. You be the judge. Um, so, yeah, Caleb, you big faker. Get out of hospital. Um, and um, we've kept up with Caleb. Now let's keep up with Camilla. Uh, what are Charles and Camilla up to today? I know, I know you're, you're wondering this. Uh, because, of course, yesterday uh, they, they had a big cocktail event in Auckland hosted by Kerry Woodham. I wonder how many dirty jokes she cracked. Probably not as many as usual. Um, and Prince Charles uh, loved uh, the Top Twins, especially loved the Invisible Poi dance. Um, and then Kerry said that apparently, she's quoted here on the Newstalk ZB website. This is all very incestuous, this whole story, isn't it? We got the Newstalk ZB host, I work at Newstalk ZB. Uh, this is off the Newstalk ZB website. Anyway. Uh, apparently Charles enjoyed the Top Twins' invisible poi dance so much he was almost falling off his chair. From what I've seen of Prince Charles recently, he's quite often almost falling off his chair. That's kind of like his natural chair sitting technique. Anyway, what are they up to today? Well, turns out, turns out nothing. Uh, they've got a they've got a, a, a day off to a day to themselves. So I got to wondering, what do Prince Charles and Camilla get up to on a day to themselves? Here's how I see it in my mind. Um, they sit on, on a sort of a normal sized sofa, probably quite some distance apart from each other. And then they sit there and they look at each other. And one of them, maybe Charles, I don't know, says, so here we are then. And Camilla goes, yep. Here we are. And Charles might say something like, how about that invisible poi dance, eh? And Camilla might say something like, yep, how about that? And it pretty much goes like that, on like that for the rest of the day. Compelling stuff, eh? That's how I see it in my mind. I don't know how you see it in yours. Anyway, that has been Glen ZB TV. Thank you so much for having me in your telly. And remember, Probably not a good idea to feed these to your dog, even though they're quite obviously dog food. Don't fall for that one. And um, uh, uh, thank you so much for having me in your telly.